Okay, so starting now, here we are at the second day of the Indusco 2021, yes, the 14th uh, International Conference on Industry Application eh, by IEEE. And we're beginning uh, the second session of track A, yeah, the Power Energy 6. Okay. So we'll have here uh, six presentations today, and we have six authors here. And we'll first uh, show the short videos. Yeah? So if you're interested in any of the topics discussed in the short videos, you can go to the, the proceedings to find the, the full length video. And also, of course, uh, the papers yeah? uh, relating to these uh, presentations, OK? So uh, we can start by transmitting the bits, please. My name is Diane Oliveira, and I am studying the last period of graduation in electrical engineering at Federal Rural University of San Diego. I represent the following work included in the International Conference on Industry Applications 2021. The title of this work is Energy Efficiency Analysis and Buildings of a University Campus Using the Procell Earth C, in which I shared the authorship with the teachers Max Gianca and Alison Freitas. The work introduction is based on the concept of the sustainable buildings. Thus, the Procell Edifica program encouraged concepts of efficient energy in buildings, and together with the Brazilian labeling program, it developed the PBA Edifica label evaluating the energy efficiency levels through the regulations RTQR and RTQC for residential and commercial buildings. In this context, the objectives of this work are the energy efficiency analysis of buildings at the Federal Rural University of semi Arid, UFESA, Caraúbas campus, using the RTQC of the Procel Edifica program with the focus on the classification of the light and air conditioning systems and analysis of the renewable energy source contribution. In the methodology, we have three main steps. The first is an on-site survey of installed load at university classrooms blocks. The second step consists of applying the RTQC, analyzing the building envelope, air conditioning system, and lighting system. Each analyzed system has a numerical equivalent according to its efficiency level, which will be applied in RTQC total score equation. And the third step consists in the analysis of the contribution of the solar power plant to the energy efficiency classification of classrooms blocks. In the results, after evaluating the system, the PT equation determined the final efficiency level of the buildings according to RTQC, determining the level B for the three buildings without bonus score. The contribution of the solar power plant to the campus has verified in order to obtain the bonus score. And finally, the PT equation as recalculated with the bonus score resulting in a final efficiency level A for all buildings. At the conclusion, it was possible to verify the, the total classification of each building approximate to the maximum level of energy efficiency, even considering the worst case to envelope and the level C for the lighting system. And the highest efficiency level for all buildings when considering the solar power plant contribution. The authors are grateful to the UFERSA for providing the necessary documents needed to carry out this work. There are some of our references and I hope you had enjoyed the presentation. Thank you.
Hi to all, my name is Felipe Bovolini de Grigoleto from Federal University of Pampa and I will present the paper entitled SEPUP 7 Level Common Ground Transformable Inverter. The other authors are Paulo Henrique Moura, Diego Chaves and Jerônimo Villaverde. Grid Connected Transformable Inverter is an attractive solution since it presents high efficiency, reduced size, cost and volume. However, it can present leakage currents that circulates through the parasitic capacitance. For security reasons, they have to be limited. The aim of this paper is to propose a common ground inverter where the ground connection is shared between the DC input and AC output, so a constant common mode voltage is achieved and leakage current are theoretically eliminated. The other advantages are triple voltage again, reduced number of devices, and eight conduction states. The switching states for positive output voltages are presented, where the output can be three times VDC, two VDC, VDC, or zero. For the negative half cycle, we have the voltages zero, minus VDC, minus two VDC, and minus three VDC. Space vector modulation can be used to derive the drive signals to the switches, where the switching states can be placed in the SV diagram. A comparison among different common ground topologies shows that the proposed topology presents the lower number of switches, a minimum voltage required is 33% and no charge balancing mechanism is required. Simulation results for a 1 kW prototype are obtained. The rest parameters are shown in the table. The waveform of output voltage, output current, and DC voltage capacitor for unit power factor operation is shown at left, and for lagging power factor operation is shown at right. The DC voltage ripple is lower than 5% and TAG is lower than 5%. Here it's presented the voltage across the switches. The switches 1, 2 and 5 support VDC voltage. The switches 4 and 8 supports two VDC voltages and the switches 3, 6 and 7 supports three VDC voltages. This paper proposed a seven level common ground topology with the advantages of triple voltage again, reduced number of switches and inherent voltage capacitor balance. Now we are developing the experimental results for the prototype and efficient measurements. Thank you for your attention. Sou o Vitor Hayashi, da Escola Politécnica da USP, e irei apresentar o artigo Design Sprint para a criação de serviços inovadores em redes elétricas inteligentes. Bom, considerando as atividades de pesquisa e desenvolvimento no setor elétrico brasileiro, a transformação energética que está vindo ali com as redes elétricas inteligentes, o viés de sustentabilidade que vem como uma premissa ali da sociedade para o setor e na verdade, para as empresas como um todo, é, as iniciativas de empreendedorismo no setor e os casos de sucesso de startups internacionais como a Tiber. É, a pergunta de pesquisa aqui foi como criar serviços inovadores que agreguem valor aos consumidores residenciais, considerando as oportunidades que as redes elétricas inteligentes podem trazer ao setor elétrico brasileiro. 
Então, para isso, nós é, aplicamos o método Design Sprint, mas antes disso, fizemos um questionário ali com 63 participantes é, online, né? onde pegamos diversas questões, tanto sociais, quanto também é, de motivação, seja pelo viés de sustentabilidade ou de economia de energia. Fizemos também algumas entrevistas, de uma forma semi-estruturada, de 30 minutos cada, é, onde nós conseguimos fazer tanto perguntas de forma aberta quanto é, rascunhos ali pelos participantes. O método de design sprint foi feito é, ao longo de um mês, usando essas cinco etapas, que é entender, definir, divergir, decidir, prototipar e validar, tudo isso de forma colaborativa, que é o grande é, destaque desse método. Conseguimos fazer um protótipo aqui de alta fidelidade, é, e dessa forma a gente conseguiu fazer os testes com usuários reais, cinco usuários, e a partir desses feedbacks nós conseguimos fechar o Design Sprint e ver que realmente o problema é uma coisa relevante, a gente precisa trabalhar então em alguns pontos, principalmente é, não na questão ali de mostrar o percentual ali e o quanto que gastou em cada mês, mas sim maiores detalhes de cada aparelho, que a gente colocou ali de geladeira, uma possibilidade de substituição, isso não ficou tão claro assim, é, para esses usuários. Bom, esse artigo aqui, ele propõe avaliar se o método Design Sprint proposto pelo Google pode ser aplicado aqui no setor energético, e aí a gente faz uma um destaque aqui para as etapas aí de colaboração, usando o Design Sprint e os testes com usuários reais, e como trabalho futuros a gente quer pegar a parte do Design Thinking e cocriação de soluções. Agradecemos ao Fundo Patrimonial Amigos da Poli pelo apoio financeiro. Muito obrigado. applied to small signal stability in power systems. This work proposed the application of a linear quadratic regulator feedback controller designed via linear matrix inequalities using the G-stability concept to add damping to low-frequency electromechanical oscillations and ensure the stability of the single machine infinite bus electric power system, which was modeled using the current sensitivity model considering polytopic uncertainties. An optimal controller based on the problem of infinite horizon deterministic LTR aims to determine a control law that minimizes the quadratic performance index, as defined in the first equation. By applying Schur's complement to the problem expressed in the previous slide, the following optimization process can be expressed. To test the efficiency of the design controllers, exogenous disturbances on delta U were simulated at approximately t equals to 1 second in the form of a step of 10% on the input mechanical power of the generator shaft, similar to a small adjustment in the generation. The open loop response for this case is shown in the figure on the left. The figure on the right shows the variation of the angular speed of the generator shaft for the closed loop system, consider the LQR controller in red and the GLQR controller in blue. This figure shows the multiplicative uncertainty curve of the system in black and the transfer functions of the angular speed of the rotor of the synchronous machine in closed loop considering the LQR controller in red and the GLQR controller in blue. It can be seen that the proposed control strategy is robust to design conditions 
since there is no crossing point between the uncertainty curve and the respective closed loop transfer function curve. However, the same does not occur with the LKR controller. It can be seen that the LKR controller is not robust, since the response of the closed loop transfer function in the frequency domain touches the parametric uncertainty curve of the system for the simulated worst case. To numerically evaluate the response of both controllers, four performance indices were analyzed, as shown in, table, in the second table. The lower values indicate a better performance of the GLKR controller. By analyzing the obtained results, it can be seen that the proposed control approach proved to be efficient because, first, it was possible to transform the previous unstable single machine infinite bus system into a stable system with the state feedback gains obtained, with additional damping higher than the LKR alone. Second, from the analysis of the performance indices, it is verified that the performance of the proposed controller is shown to be more efficient than the LKR controller. Thank you. Hello, my name is Walter and I'm going to present the work Transient Analysis of Interconnected Grounding Grids Under Physically and Damaged Conditions. Uh, this work was made together with Anderson Ricardo Justo de Araújo, José Luciano Aslan da Nibali, Wagner Costa da Silva, and Professor José Pesolato Filho. So to evaluate the safety of grounding grids, uh, we can compute their GPR during the, the transient states. Uh, there are many topologies that for grounding grids and they can also be connect, interconnected between themselves in, uh, as an uh, attempt to reduce the transient voltages. However, because of our environmental conditions, uh, the grounding bars can be damaged, which can impact the performance of the grounding grid. In this paper, uh, the GPR of an interconnecting grounding grid is investigated for a hole and damage conductors and the GPR be, being generated by lightning currents for the first and subsequent return strokes. In the simulations, the software XGS Lab is utilized, a uh, software that uses the method of the partial element equivalent circuit. So here we show the topology of the interconnected grounding grids that were used in the simulations. Here we can see the point of the ruptures and also the injection point of the current. Here it is shown the uh, GPRs that were that we found for the 500 ohms meter. We can see that the GPR is more concentrated on the first grid where the injection of the current happens in the damage condition in comparison to the whole condition and in comp comparing the first strokes and subsequent strokes we can see that uh, the subsequent strokes remain much more concentrated uh, in a single area than the first stroke here we present the results for a the for the soil with a thousand ohms meter being this having the same behavior as the 500 ohms meter but with higher peaks because of the high resistivity of the soil so in conclusion uh, damage connections increase the transient voltages at the side of the injection current being more pronounced for the first return stroke uh, our results also indicate that ruptures can effectively 
uh, affect, sorry, significantly, significantly the electrical safety of personnel there by uh, the grounding grid. And as an alternative, uh, more vertical rods can be installed in the grid in order to reduce the GPR levels. Um, we'd like to thank you for your attention and here is our emails if you'd like to contact us. Thank you. of low-cost hydrophobic coatings in the performance of photovoltaic models. Superficial dust deposition on PV models significantly and negatively impacts the power generation capacity and consequent associated economic losses. As a result, PV model coatings techniques by hydrophobic coatings were developed to allow natural cleaning. Our purpose in this research is to improve the performance of PV models by mitigating the process of dust adhesion, avoiding the gradual loss of energy generation capacity. This paper set out to study the impact of low-cost hydrophobic coatings, usually used in automotive applications, since the coatings already studied for this specific purpose are relatively expensive. The experimental PV system used in this research consists of four PV models of 270 watt peak power each one. They were installed at 15 degrees inclination. Each PV model is connected to a single maximum power point track via micro inverter, enabling an individual analysis of energy production. The model one remains uncoated while the others were covered with a different coat each one. We carried out a performance power generation test, analyzing in terms of power generation capacity before and after coat to purge out the differences in the individual energy production of each PV model in relation on the reference PV model. All the experimental execution lasted 91 days and with the station weather station help was possible to measure some variables like uh, atmospheric temperature, rainfall rate, wind speed and solar in radiance. The low cost film is studied uh, as a conclusion. We had that the low cost film is studied did not demonstrate a considerable impact on the performance of experimental PV models. Therefore, the technical feasibility of the procedure has been not be, has not been confirmed. So the covering photovoltaic models with these codes do not lead a significant power capacity maintenance, at least in a short time period. Thank you. Okay, so we just finished the short video presentations. Okay, just reminding everyone that if you're interested in any of the, the presentations, you should check the, the full presentations on the proceeding and also uh, the full paper uh, available in the proceedings also. Okay, so we'll uh, move to the next step of the, the session. But before the, the Q&A, uh, I'd like to ask 
the, the participants to introduce themselves as there's not enough time in the short videos to give a proper introduction. So uh, I'll call each of the, the participants in the session to talk about uh, uh, their affiliation, their research, just to introduce themselves. Uh, and just reminding everyone who's watching this live on YouTube, I encourage uh, anyone to make questions on the comments and in the, in the right time, we'll forward these questions to the, to the participants. So you can ask any question anytime in the comments, just make clear which of the, the participants you are addressing. Okay, so we can start with the uh, self presentations. Uh, the, uh, the first uh, author here is Diana Oliveira from the work entitled Energy Efficiency Analysis in buildings of a university campus using the Procell RTQ.-C. Okay. Hello, good Hello. afternoon. Hello, uh, good afternoon. Could you introduce yourself? To yes, yes. 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 Uh, I am Diane Oliveira. Uh, I'm a student of, uh, I am an electric engineer electrical engineering student at the Federal Rural University of Semieri, UFESA. And uh, this work uh, is a result of a project, a research project uh, that we was made uh, at the university uh, about the energy efficiency uh, at the buildings of the university uh, the U UFERTA University. Okay, thank you, Diana. Now, so let's move on to the next presenter for the second work, uh, the Step Up 7 Level Common Ground Transformalist Inverter. It's here today with us, Felipe. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Felipe. I'm from Federal University of Santa Maria. Alegrete, Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil. Uh, I'm, I'm a professor here. Uh, I'm work with uh, power electronics, uh, modulation, uh, control, and topologies. Uh, um, uh, this work, uh, in specific, we are trying to reduce the leakage current in topologies uh, by means of uh, a new topology. And, uh, and we reduce the leakage current with modulation and strategies and uh, control strategies at all. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Felipe. And uh, the next uh, presenter here is Victor for his work uh, titled Creating Inno Innovative Service in Smart Grids Use Design Sprint. Victor Hayash. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Victor Hayashi. I'm a Master of Science student in the Polytechnic School of the University of Sao Paulo. And uh, I'm with the Computer Engineering uh, Department. And in this work, we investigated how we could create uh, innovative services uh, using the smart grid concept uh, and the uh, with a focus on smart meters, so we could uh, collaborate and uh, could brainstorm uh, in a good and innovative way. Okay, thank you, Victor. So the next work is uh, robust control via LMI supplied to the small single stability power systems and by Francisco Luis Carvalho. Is here with us. Hi, hello everyone. My name is Luis Cavallo and I finished my master's in UFASA, uh, the campus of Mossoró. And uh, I work with uh, predictive control, switching control, and the, the mix of the, the, the both techniques of control. And this works we're presenting now. It's part of the, the the, the high group of research, uh, they, they grew up uh, research with operative control, switching control, uh, power, power systems, 
mathematical errors calls and uh, and the other ships uh, i'm very gra grateful to to participate in the this congress and uh, i and i and i very nervous uh, <laughs> Okay, so we can go to the next uh, presenter. Uh, okay, you can you can repeat me, please. Uh, the oh, internet okay. here it's, it's a little bad. Uh, okay, for me it's working perfectly. Yeah? So thank you, Luis. We can move to the next presenter. For the connection is not good. For me, it's looking normal. So, sorry, then we have some technical difficulties here. Everyone's I'm not seeing anything. And the, can I ask for you? How about you? Oh, hello. Um, so my name is Walter. I am a master science student at uh, State University of Campinas at the Department of Systems and Energy. And uh, in our work, we uh, discuss the uh, we evaluate the behavior of a grounding grid under whole and damage conditions. Okay, we seem to have a back connection, but uh, a lot of people are complaining. So let's do, move to the next. Uh, and then maybe we can find the connection proofs. Okay, so let's try the, the last uh, presenter for the work evaluation of low cost hydrophobic codes in performance of photovoltaic modules. Mm -hmm. so, Hello, everybody. I'm Carolina Melo. Um, current is an uh, engineer, electrical engineer student. I'm on seventh semester. And my search, search is part of a um, project of uh, assessment of impact of dirty photovoltaic panels with uh, thermo thermograph. And I'm very thankful to be here today. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll try to open now for the QA uh, with. Uh, all participants, uh, I see we have some connection problems. Let's see if we can add all participants. Okay, I think mostly are uh, working. Uh, I think your uh, uh, code share is now a little bit laggy. Also, uh, the router speeds also seem uh, a little bit laggy for me. Well, okay, can, uh, Andrea, can I? Can you hear? Uh, not so well, no, no. It's uh, very okay. Tough. Please continue for continue then. Uh, people are saying that they are not, you know, capable of understanding also my feet. So I think it's a general problem. I don't know if anyone's working properly. Okay, uh, I'm confirming that. Can anyone understand me? Or it's, it's sorry. Okay, I don't think anyone is. is... Okay, uh, so let's try. Can you hear me?
Okay, is anyone understanding me now? Vito, you still me? Hello? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not comprehending. Okay, okay I, I don't think it's working. Okay. I can see. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Is it working? Is it working? It's freezing. It's freezing. Freezing. Yeah. Okay. I can hear and drive. Can, can or can? No. Yeah, uh, the other participants uh, apparently I can hear them. It's okay, but uh, Andrea and Reginaldo, is, I'm having a little bit of a problem understanding you. Okay. Can you hear me? On the rest of you, being shared. Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, answer the question. Uh, it, it is of great importance that industries carry out periodic uh, assessments and certifications of the constructions to verify the energy efficiency. Uh, energy efficiency in the industrial sector can make a major contribution to. Uh, alleviating the economic effects of the current situation facing 
faced by the pandemic. Can you hear me then? Yes, yes, I, I can hear you. Do you have some results about these efficiency uh, indicators, numbers? Uh, actually, the the research uh, was made at the buildings of uh, at the university. Um, the results are uh, uh, related with the the buildings of the of one university and yeah. that's all that's all you have some numbers about uh, percentage about of um, benefits and so on it's um I think that you have uh, some wins about these efficient procedures. Uh, then can you explain some number about this? Uh, can you please uh, could repeat the, the question? Uh, I don't In understand it so at well. The, at the university, uh, you applied uh, some some measures uh, about the teachings. Do you have some results in positive or negative gain and things about this application? Some universities, uh, sorry, uh, there's a question in the chat. Uh, some universities, uh, uh, we, uh, sorry, have uh, applied the RTKC to, and uh, the results about the the diagnosis of energy efficiency are related by this. Uh, the they also applied in, in commercial buildings, uh, public and industrial buildings. Uh, mm. The numbers are, I, I don't have now yeah. the, the, the numbers related at the results, the application of RTKC, but it's basically the good way to measure the level of energy efficiency of the buildings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Dan. I think that, Felipe, can you explain and develop some of something of, about this question that are printed on, on the screen? Uh, currently, the industry uh, uses uh, traditional topologies for the connection of PV inverters, uh, but solve the issue of uh, leakage currents, then it's use a transformer invert. Mm -hmm. uh, another option is the patented topologies. Uh, some some industry uses patent patented topologies to comply with leakage current, uh, mm -hmm. such as. RIC H5, H6 is some of the patented uh, uh, topologies. These topologies reduce the common mount voltages, but uh, the industry has the patent and to pay royalties. Um, so this topology proposed it, it's it's possible to reduce the, the, the leakage current uh, with high voltage gain and reduce it TG, uh, uh, a high quality of output current. Uh, then it's a good option to use for PV inverters. Then we have uh, economical impact too in this uh, approach, okay? 
into the interesting. Uh, this topology uh, reduces the number of switches yeah. compared to the other topologies. Then is uh, this issue is a is a good option for reduce the cost of the inverter. This topology has uh, eight switches, eight power switches. Uh, the next topology uh, has ten power switches for the same output level, seven levels. Is a good economic option. Uh, I think that uh, innovative approach would be constructed using this fundamental of your research. Yes. Okay, Felipe, thank you. Thank you. Now, Victor, can you uh, discuss something about your research and, and develop some ideas about your results? Uh, sure. Uh, in the work uh, creating innovative services using Design Sprint, we investigated uh, how the method of Design Sprint could be used for the energy sector. So, for an academic standpoint, we could not find in the literature uh, a similar work that uh, presents a uh, study case uh, for a specific sector of uh, testing this method, uh, specifically with uh, the smart grid infrastructure. So, we were motivated by that. And uh, from uh, industry, possible industry application, we know that uh, many enterprises uh, are based on software, uh, software as a service. Uh, many enterprises like this, they use the method of design sprint to collaborate with their clients. Uh, but uh, we think that uh, by showing this proposal, we could also collaborate with the utility companies in order to create together um, startups and uh, utility companies, innovative services for the people, for the residential and industry energy consumers. And uh -huh. uh, the main results show that uh, it was feasible to collaborate and uh, prototype uh, and test with, with uh, real users. So we think that uh, these results show this uh, the ability of our proposal. Can you hear me, Victor? Yes. Okay, so let me try the camera again. Uh, I have a question for, for you. Then. Uh, did you have to adapt your, your process because of the pandemic? Because you have a collaborative process. And to see you have to use a lot of the most special knowledge. Did you have selected because of the network? It was also planned by this uh, Sure, we had to adapt to uh, uh, using various uh, virtual tools like uh, the virtual dashboard middle uh, that uh, all participants can uh, collaborate, can edit in real time, and uh, we could uh, work together as a team in these sessions of the design sprint. And uh, also for the test with real users, uh, we needed to do it in a virtual form using Google Meet, for example. So uh, in the original, uh, there's also face-to-face -face, uh, tests with real users, with your prototypes, but we could not do it uh, uh, because of this pandemic, but it, okay. it could adapt and it still present some many results. And do you think it worked well with this uh, remote tools? I think that uh, we could uh, uh, maybe what uh, you must uh, work more is about the test with real users uh, because the when you are not face to face, you lose a lot of uh, aspects that you could observe. But for the collaborative and uh, engaging the team uh, with uh, virtual sessions, we could uh, uh, provide uh, enough uh, 
results. You were satisfied. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Peter, uh, uh, one more. Uh, can you you mentioned amigos da poli? Can you explain it, please? Well, it's an uh, endowment fund related to the Polytechnic School of the University of São Paulo, uh, the engineering department. So we got uh, uh, funded by them. And uh, uh, we think that uh, it uh, provided us with uh, the financial support needed uh, for us to do the survey with uh, a lot of uh, people. So if uh, the Diamond Fund did not uh, uh, provide us with support, it would be harder uh, to reach to all these people, but uh, with uh, their help, you could do it. Okay. And Leandro, thank you. Leandro, hi, Leandro. Can you hear me? Okay, I think we can proceed to the next. Francisco, you asked the question. Oh, hi. It's, uh, it's a little hard to hear, but. <laughs> so if I if I have the impact of my research and the, the industries, I, I say not much because the electrical power industries it's it's a, a very conservative area that's a very traditional the most part of the technique of control apply, apply in the systems is a classic techniques with the PID, pe and uh, the controller that are synthesized by the the old techniques of the numeric control and uh, and the consolidated in the industries it's uh, very hard for them to change one time for other uh, to a strategy of control. Uh, and in my research, the research of my group, we applied the, the output feedback to stabilize the systems. And uh, then the dumping, the LOFs, the low frequency oscillation. Uh, in the reality, in the real world, the, this dumping, it's made it by PE in the most parts of the systems. So the impact of the academic area, it's very high because the open dots to applications, the different techniques of control, like predictive control and uh, fuzzy control uh, and many others. So if I have to, to say something about my research, the most parts of the impact of the hand, the, it's in the academic area. It's not the industry because because this they, they conserve the high traditional of the area. Okay. In digital uh, computation, uh, in digital, are you hearing me? In digital computation, we, we have the same. We have your traditional computer in binary numbers, but we have a, a huge transformation which quantum computing that in the in your <laughs> research line you have to to be determined to apply this kind of other kinds of control methods okay i'm sorry i don't understand your your question because it's cutting so much you, you uh, are Okay. Uh, and his question also. Uh, I have a question of my own. Okay, so in, in now application in the academy, how do you compare your methods with the others in the literature? Do you understand? It's a very difficult to okay. to hear. 
it's uh, Okay. So, so sorry. I, I understand now how I compare my proposed met with the others and in the literature. Uh, Firstly, the, the comparison between the, the both techniques it is data maiden, but we don't have the necessity of the the show and in the, in the paper because the paper it's be it's become so long. So the comparison between that it's submitting the, the same systems to to the same situation of operation, the same point of operation, and then we applicating the, the both. Uh, strategy of the control and and we see and we we'll observe they both have the the success of the control of the system but the application um uh, our application uh, have given given uh, more facility of the allocation polls and lapis plan uh, they chose the parameters of the uh, the operation uh, the proposed map given to us more, more parameters of the, the, the project. So the one time making this, sorry, uh, after this, we, we using the no intrusive index of performance. The, the index of performance uh, classical in the literature have in the, the full paper. And what all methods or proposed methods have the more efficient numerical, so and uh, visually, we make the comparison between them with numerical and uh, the simulation and time. So, is this we have the, this this comparison between the both techniques? Okay. Question. So, in in future works, we we have to to continue with we research applic application the other techniques of control, like predictive control. It's part of my work, and switching control. We have the the make the application of this con this techniques of the control, techniques of control and comparison. One between the other, the the metal the methods of the output feedback and the classical methods. Uh, in future, we we make we applicate in the same techniques and systems more bigger with the mood, mood machines uh, because the application we do it we just one machine one generator one generator. Okay. okay, so uh, we proceed with uh, Walter, which was substituted by Anderson. Okay. So the general question first. Qual o impacto na pesquisa? Hello everyone, I am Anderson and uh, Walter and I, we are from Unicamp, uh, School of Electrical and Computer Engineering. And this is the question, qual o impacto na pesquisa? Is this for me, no? This last question, I think. Okay. Uh, what I we understand the, the problem 
is like when we have any power plants, industrial applications, uh, transmission towers, or eolic uh, wind parks, we need a good uh, grounding system that has to dissipate the high currents that are originated by faults or by lightning discharge at these extractors. So the main point is investigate in our paper how is the impact if we have a ground system and for one reason we have one of the bars that connect the different grids is damaged, is ruptured. So what would be the, the impact? And we show that that would create an imbalance of the potentials that could cause deaths of the people working around the area and damage the equipment. So we show how this will impact the performance of the ground system. And also we propose an uh, alternative to reduce this uh, dangerous potential on the ground grids. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, do you understand me or, or, or better, like a question? It's cutting a little bit, but yeah, we can delay. Um, my question mm -hmm. here. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the chat. Okay. The facts of a red implemented in a software, did you have it? Okay. Uh, it is already all implemented using the uh, XGS lab and using the PEC uh, method. So we <coughs> have made previous analysis uh, using different methods just to confirm the results with simple ground systems, for example, horizontal and vertical electrodes, and then all the ground grid, which is more complex because we have two ground grids interconnected. We have made all this in the package, in this software. So we validated before, and then we made this study case all in the software. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, uh, Another question, if anyone mm -hmm. appear. Okay, did you test other methods to solve the transient? <clears throat> In general, uh, we work with uh, another software, which is FECO, F-E-K-O, which we also uh, carry out studies for grounding electrodes and calculation of the GPR, or we calculate using the FECO software to calculate the ground impedance, and then we use MATLAB to compute the results. As I already mentioned, I validate previous results uh, using FECO and then the GPR uh, in MATLAB, which is uh, has a good consistent in, with the other results in the literature. And then, we uh, uh, we chose this uh, GS Lab software because it has the possibility to include three-dimensional structures and compute the um, GPR, the surface, in three dimensions. But yes, both was uh, validate for simple cases in both softwares, and then just this specific case was validated, was studied, in fact, in uh, XGS lab. Okay, thank you. Um, does You're welcome. I have any questions? Mm -hmm. Anderson? Uh, I don't see any questions in the chat. Okay. I think okay. I didn't understand. Is not. Is there any question to respond? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. you, we can we can proceed then. Mm -hmm. Thank you very okay. much, Anderson. You're welcome. Thank you for the, 
the conference and the opportunity. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we'll proceed with uh, the last work, the evaluation of low-cost hydrophobic voting in the performance of photovoltaic modules. Uh, okay, so if, uh, by, uh, Caroline can start by answering the, the general question first. Okay, let's go. So uh, this research, uh, first time we uh, evaluated the technical feasibility of low cost hydrophone products to diminish the loss of energy uh, generation capacity. So we believe that how we uh, took uh, as a result, the technical feasibility of the procedure uh, was not confirmed. So we believe that the story, the story can encourage further studies and create new technologies and coding methods for photovoltaic models while this can keep the prices low and affordable and promoting the uh, economical feasibility of the procedure to, to make a, a solar image more uh, user and, and increasing the performance of the system too. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll, uh, I have some questions right here in the chat, so it's better. Okay, so, uh, what well, do you perform tests with the specific coachings for PV models? The market, what did we work well? So, um, we proposed a study that used uh, coatings and that was not specifically for PV systems. And so, we used automotive uh, wind shoots and, and motorcycle helmets, and that is almost totally disclosed for using PV models just because well proposed it's study low cost hydrophobic coins. So uh, as the result uh, our, our conclusion was that uh, the performance is not was not so good. And over the three months of testing, the three experimental PV models showed the meteorological irrelevant change in the power generation capacity, range from decrease of 0.7% to increase of 0.8%. So, considering the uncertainties involving the measurement of its performance, uh, and this is increase uh, was, did not was meteorologically significant as pointed out by uh, the statistical test that we performed uh, sorry my my connection it's it's that do, do you can hear me now okay uh, so, um, yeah. so uh, okay. okay the the statistical test that we performed uh, do, did not uh, show the significant uh, results with the this type of codes. To everyone now.
So, uh, if I go first, as can I say uh, after, uh, the most the most impact of my research is in the academic area. Uh, the methodology of we applicating in the electrical power systems open doors for application the many techniques of control then before then it's are not applicated it's not usually applicated in the analysis of the small si small signal and establish uh, so the strategy of the realimentated uh, have possibilitated possibility. then we applicate on the predictive control uh, the model predictive control the optimal control just like lkr L lgr and many others okay uh for me uh, Yes, uh, I've been working with grounding system modeling. So in this example, we use XGS Lab. So it is a electromagnetic software. Uh, one of the many that has <clears throat> appeared in the literature uh, recently. So I work also with FECO and combined with MATLAB. So what I see is that many package are increasing the capacity to evaluate different ground system topologies. For example, winding parks and transmission lines or company ground systems, and which is a good promise in the future because also for new topologies with more capacity of processing data and <clears throat> and design new topologies. We have uh, interest in creating the same condition as experiments instead of carrying out the experiments in lab or in the field. So what I see that the packets are come more with more options that reproduce the real world and probably the experiments or experimental works in lab would be something that could be uh, also a second option uh, from these softwares, from this software package, package that we can uh, carry out all the simulations and validations that we need. So in the future, I think like this would be a good promise for the industrial application and also for the university. Uh, if I may comment, uh, with this initial exploratory uh, research, we got uh, motivated to uh, develop an energy awareness recommendation system. So we know that uh, the people, people in general, don't know what she. Uh, energy awareness is, and uh, we wanted to provide them with uh, personalized uh, recommendations and, uh, and actually scale that uh, test that we applied in design sprint with uh, just uh, a handful of uh, five users. So we are aiming to uh, develop an app with the uh, natural language interactions, like in a chatbot, so people could uh, interact and uh, raise the energy awareness for themselves. In this case, we need to connect with a uh, uh, dialed line of uh, scissors. Uh, are you here? <laughs> Uh, I think that uh, Professor Reginaldo uh, commented about the, the Procell in, uh, I think it was 
the end work or another work that he was presented here. And uh, I think that uh, uh, it would be good to maybe integrate because the process has been doing an excellent job in this field of energy efficiency. So we think of uh, getting their information to providing then to the general public in our system could be very good for the platform. Okay, so we have a question for Francisco. Yes, yes. Uh, that's questions for me. Uh, as can I say, uh, Yes, it's it's a very high possibility to applicate in the strategy of the control, the the output feedback, and the state feedback, and uh, the networks with more more than one machines, more than one uh, generator, and the 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 systems more complex. The expectation at the the strategy of the control uh, can be reduced. The number of devices accoplating in the networks to stabilize, to control, and dumping the LOF, the LOFs in, in the network. So that's it's the next next step of the research, and we're very anxious to starting the publish the papers with the, that proposal. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think Reginald had some observations or comments. Uh, no, or it's okay. I can't explain. I, I, write, I wrote something, some observations. Anderson, would you like to make some comments? No. Okay, um, Anderson, the platform that's in the world one computer. Is that questions, a comment? I don't. A comment, a simple comment. I think it's like a comment. Who is. Well, uh, I don't know exactly how to that's from the cloud computing. I honestly, I don't know how to, to answer it because I, I don't know <laughs> working. Okay, <laughs> the comments. Okay, but probably in the future we can integrate and carry out the online <clears throat> simulations at least for university for students that that has interest in studying ground system and probably we can uh, develop some platform to this because this interface with. Uh, FICO that I, I have been working, we can integrate with MATLAB and then uh, ATP software. So we can combine three different packets to create and to analyze um, ground system, GPR, overvolt and power system. That could be then an online version, something like this. Okay. Well, uh, podemos uh, encerrar, está muito difícil prosseguir assim. Ok, ok, thank you. Uh, sorry, everybody, for uh, the technical difficulties. I think we tried through, uh, didn't put this, but uh, anyway, I congratulate all of you. You all did uh, great work. And I'm just uh, here, just close this section, okay? So we just close this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you, everyone, yeah, for the yeah. opportunity. And thank sorry you. about my English. I, I need to oh. practice the conversation. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.